Hello everyone. Before we start today's lesson, if you'd like to have a go at Kevin's Quiz of the Week at the end, find yourself a piece of paper or a book and write the numbers 1 to 10 down the left hand side of the page. So let me get this right. You're saying you've lived behind my shed all this time without me knowing. Yes, that's right. Just over here behind the trampoline. Oh, this is really wet. So just round here. Yep, that's it. Home sweet home. Um, yeah, it's lovely. So how did you get here again? Let me tell you all about it. Behind the studio shed in the Midlands town, amphibian, who knows how to get down? A span the genre is, yeah. I've got soul, been singing songs since I was a tadpole, swimming in my pond on a fine spring day, minding my own business on my merry way. I couldn't have known how bad things would get when I stupidly swam into a net. Here's a musical toll, musical toll, yeah. In a glass jam jar, swimming in circles carried oh so far, not knowing who to blame, who I should thank. The well, next thing I knew, I was in a tank, and in that tank, of sadness and sighs, I began to change to metamorphosize. I had to break free, felt like I'd explode, cause now I was the size of a full grown toad. Here's a musical toad, musical toad, yeah. was able to the rock that aquarium to the edge of the table it teetered on the edge then quick as a flash it fell to the floor with a deafening crash not turning to look back at the mess inside i hopped away to find somewhere to hide behind a shed in a garden found a place to lay and that's where i've lived right to this day Right to yeah, this is a good time, oh, I said it was a good time. Music vocabulary. Dynamics! So last week we talked all about tempo, which was, Kevin? Fast, like a cheetah, and slow, like a tortoise. Yes, that's right. We also mentioned a couple of other words, though. We talked about timbre, which was? The type of sound or instrument. And we also mentioned pitch, which is? <coughs> middle. Low. That's right. This week, we're going to focus on new vocabulary, and that word is dynamics, which means loud, quiet. Yeah, it's not very often that you're silent, though, is it, Kevin? How oh, rude. I like that poster, Mr. S. It's really helpful so I don't forget the elements of music. Where can I get one from? Oh, thanks, Kevin. I'll show you how. You can look on my website. Two ways that you can get to my website. You could either go to Google, type in the box, the word musical toad, and then press return. And then on this list, click on that one. Or by going up to the address box at the top and typing www.musical.com call toad.co.uk and then on this page you click down at the bottom where it says click to download PDF poster 
And then if you're lucky enough at home to have a printer, you could print one out and put it on your bedroom wall. That's great. Only one problem though. I don't have a bedroom. Tumblr of the Week I love the sound of brass instruments like these trumpets, trombones and of course, horns. Me too. Now this music is called Horn Concerto No. 4 by Mozart. Do you think it might be twice as good as this concerto number no. 2? I don't know, but I do think we should probably find out how brass instruments work. Oh, oh. <sighs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> Brass instruments like this trumpet make sounds when the air inside them is made to vibrate. Vibrating air molecules bump into the molecules next to them, which makes them vibrate too. This creates a sound wave which travels through the instrument and comes out of this part, which is called the bell. When a sound wave reaches our ears, we hear the sound. We can imagine what those sound waves look like using this spring. So, uh, Greg, catch one end. <coughs> nice. And if we imagine that the brass instrument is at this end, then as that sets the air vibrating, it starts off the sound wave like this. Oh, yes. Wicked. Look it's at good, that. isn't it? And you can see the vibration travelling all the way along the spring. Check it back. But how do you get the air in the brass instrument to vibrate? It's not as simple as just blowing into it. It's time. You still can't do it. When you play a brass instrument properly, this is what your lips look like. In super slow-mo, you can see that your lips have to vibrate, which means they're moving backwards and forwards really quickly. Believe it or not, a player's lips can vibrate over a thousand times a second. It's the player's lips vibrating against the mouthpiece that makes the air in the trumpet vibrate, and this creates the sound waves. But these sound waves don't come directly out of the bell. Instead, they're bounced backwards and forwards, creating what we call a standing wave. Let me show you. Um, right, we've got a rope here, and Greg, can you... That end, brilliant, hold it. Now, What's going to happen is Greg is going to wiggle his end of the rope, it's going to bounce off me, and we should create a standing wave. So go on, start your wiggling. Go on, go on, go on! And there we go, it! That is a standing wave, and it's known as a standing wave because the wave doesn't look to be moving, even though we are wiggling the rope. Can I stop yet? Yes, you can. <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> So, what happens is the air inside the instrument is vibrating. That then sets the air outside the instrument vibrating, and the vibrations then move through the air until they reach our ears. It is, isn't it? Yeah, loud. And it is loud, because how loud something is, its volume, depends on the size of the vibrations that make up the sound waves. So if I blow hard with more energy, I make bigger vibrations. No. <laughs> and that produces a louder sound. If I can make my lips vibrate more gently, I make smaller vibrations with less energy. So the sound is softer, like this. Yeah, I prefer that. Thought you might. The earliest brass instruments weren't in fact made from brass at all. They were made from shells and animal horns, which is how some of them got their name, horns. Makes sense. Now, modern brass instruments, like this French horn, look a little bit different. Now, one thing you might not have noticed at first glance is they are just really long tubes. They're just curled up really tightly to make them easier to hold and to play. Now, if we were to unwind all the tubing in the French horn, you'd find that it's a whopping five metres long. <laughs> a sound is coming out, but the thing is, a major problem is that it's very difficult to play lots of different notes. What sort of note comes out of your brass instrument depends how much air inside the instrument is vibrating. When lots of air vibrates, it tends to vibrate more slowly, making a lower note. Less air vibrates faster, and we hear a higher pitch note. Now, to prove this, I've put three metal tubes inside these three bottles of coloured water. In this bottle, there's a lot of water. In this one, not so much. And in this one, even less. This means there's more air in this tube 
less air in this one, and even less in this third one. So if I blow across the tube with the most air in it, this one, I should make the low note. But if I blow across the tube with the least air in it, this one, I should get a higher note. Should. And if I blow across the middle tube, I should get a note that's somewhere between the two. Out of air that's vibrating in your instrument. There are several ways to do that on brass instruments. Now, one way is to use something called a slide, and this is how a trombone works. If I stretch the slide out as far as I can, it makes the tube of air longer, and that means a lower pitched note. <laughs> But if I pull it back as far as it will go, then the tube of air gets shorter, which gives a higher pitch note. See? Lovely, yes. Now, different positions on the slide make different lengths of air, which make lots of different notes. Okay, I get it, I get it. Another way of changing the amount of air that's vibrating is to use something called a valve. On an instrument like the trumpet, the player can press three vowels. This is how you play the note C. And to make a higher note like B, you do this. Pressing the vowels means there's less air vibrating and that makes the note higher. Brilliant! Another brass instrument is called a bugle and it has no vowels at all. And you can make one from some ordinary plastic piping. So while I finish this off, um, Greg, what else have you found out about brass instruments? Well, they're not all made of brass. The shofar is a Jewish instrument made from the horn of a sheep. It dates back thousands of years and is still used in synagogues all over the world. How's your bugle getting on, friend? I'm almost there, and this is what you do. You take a length of really clean hosepipe, about a metre long, and you've got to wind it round twice, like this. And I've used sticky tape just to hold it in place and stop it from unwinding. Then again, we use a clean hosepipe connector, and we attach that onto one end, and this is going to be the mouthpiece of our bugle. And you just screw that into place like that. Gotcha. And at the other end, you use a funnel, and that is the bell. Easy. Yep. And then you're all done. It's a bugle. That's surprisingly good. It's good, isn't it? And yeah. I've built you one so we can take our place in the orchestra and jam along with Mozart's Horn Concerto number four. I'd love to. <laughs> My name is Alistair Mackey. I'm one of the principal trumpets in the Philharmonia Orchestra. I've always loved the trumpet, and to play it in a symphony orchestra is a tremendously exciting thing to do. Composers often use you at the biggest moments of the piece, the most exciting moments they give to the trumpet. The trumpet itself, in some ways, really just amplifies what is happening there. This here is a piccolo trumpet, and it's pitched exactly an octave higher than this trumpet here. And although you can't really play any higher on a piccolo trumpet than you can on a large B-flat trumpet, it does give you a little bit more accuracy in that upper register. I'll play a little bit of Bach's Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 2. This is the modern tenor trombone. It's been a member of the brass family of instruments in the symphony orchestra since the early 19th century, but its history stretches back over 600 years. 
The design of the trombone is very simple. It's a hairpin shaped tube with a mouthpiece at one end and a bell flare at the other. After about the first two feet of pipe work, the tube bends to 180 degrees. The player moves the slide with the right arm and adjusts the embouchure to change the pitch. The trombone first appeared in the symphony orchestra, with, allegedly with Beethoven's Fifth Symphony in the early 19th century, but in fact had been around for over 400 years before that, playing mainly in church music and also some secular music. I think if you're a, a trombone player in a symphony orchestra, you, you'd be unlucky if you didn't enjoy playing Mahler's Third Symphony, with the big trombone solos in that. Hello, my name's Katie and I'm one of the two principal horns of the Philharmonia Orchestra. So I'm going to talk to you about the French horn. It's in the brass group um, of orchestral instruments. Um, it sits on the right hand side slightly away because we're slightly special. We're slightly special for a couple of reasons. I mean fundamentally it's the same because you make <laughs> that bit of weird buzzing sound with your lips. We vibrate our lips to create the sound. That vibration then hits the mouthpiece and then travels through the horn like that. So <laughs> goes from an ugly sound to now, the horn is quite special um, in that, firstly, it's played with the left hand, so the right hand. That is because a while back, before the valves were invented a couple of hundred years ago, we used to change the note with our hand. So, like this. That doesn't really give you an even tone, so they added some valves so we can get all the notes without having that fuzzy sound. The tuba. The tuba is the largest of the brass family of instruments. It's also considerably the youngest of that family. It's the baby of the brass section. Uh, it wasn't around for 200 years or more after the rest of the brass section was fully developed. Now, when we play the tuba, we play it in exactly the same way as every other brass instrument ever invented. And by that I mean we produce the sound with our lips like this. And we add the mouthpiece, which helps to focus the sound. And then we add the instrument, which focuses and amplifies the sound. Now you can see the valves going up and down. The valves mean that I can play chromatically on the instrument. And obviously the other big thing about the tuba is that it is very long. It's probably three times as long as a trumpet, twice as long as a trombone, which means I can play very low. Now the only instruments in the orchestra that can play as low as the tuba can would be the contrabassoon and the string bass. And I'll just play a little bit of the low register. I think you'll agree that's very low. One, two, three, four, Steve, the tortoise. Steve likes to eat curly kale. Yeah. So this week's song was originally sung by Kermit the Frog, leader of the Muppets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I never knew we'd be singing about frogs. I'm not happy about this. Frogs and toads do not get on. Let's watch this little video and see how you feel afterwards. I'll be speaking to my agent about this. We'll be taking a look at the history of the Muppets. <laughs> Believe it or not, these world-famous creations were first introduced all the way back in 1955 by Jim Henson, then a college student at the University of Maryland. It was at this time that the first incarnation of what would become the Muppets was created for the kids' show Sam and Friends. Surprisingly, the energetic combination of marionettes and puppets soon became extremely popular with the public. As a result, they made appearances on various national variety shows and commercials, while also appearing as guests on talk shows. That's one of the cleverest things I've seen in a long time. 
However, it was only in 1969 that Henson was asked to help head the groundbreaking educational show, Sesame Street. Cookie starts with C. Let's think of other things that start with C. Uh, ah, who cares about other things? C is for Cookie. That's good enough for me. While Henson's Muppets were originally envisioned as just one element of the program, they soon became the show's core. This is due to the overwhelming popularity of its iconic creations, which included Oscar the Grouch, the Cookie Monster, Grover, Big Bird, and Bert and Ernie. Oh, she for tap dancing. In 1976, Henson launched his own project called The Muppet Show. This primetime variety program consisted of sketches, songs, and celebrity guest stars. Equaling the success of Sesame Street, the new show was designed for children of all ages and their parents to enjoy together. Phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, it launched the international superstardom of the show's charming host, Kermit the Frog, and his love interest, the diva, Miss Piggy. A frog and a pig. We could have bouncing baby figs. <laughs> of course, it also gave us a wealth of other lovable characters. These included Fozzie Bear, the Swedish Chef, Gonzo the Great, and the house band Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. The popularity of this cast is attributed to the fact that the characters can be anything, including humans, animals, robots, aliens, and everything else in between. As a result, this multi-species cast was able to transcend the issues of race and instead focus on the values of friendship and cultural harmony. I don't know what to say except that if you the frog want me the bear to stay, then I just have to have a raise. <laughs> Oh, I need a bigger dressing room and a limousine. Will you get out of here, Fozzie? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. As for the production involved, it may surprise you to know that Kermit the Frog originally appeared on Sam and Friends years earlier and was originally meant to be a lizard. This would have become a reality, except that Henson couldn't find frills for the character's neck. Henson had already cut up his mother's coat to create the puppet, so with old ping pong balls for eyes, he created the closest thing he could think of. Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the morning star? Somebody thought of that and someone believed it. Look what it's done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? And what do we think we might see? Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? What's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, they're only illusions Rainbows have nothing to hide So we've been told and some choose to believe it But I know they're wrong, wait and see Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the morning star? Somebody thought of that, and someone believed it, and look what it's done. So far What's so amazing That keeps us stargazing What do we think we might see? Someday we'll find it The rainbow connection The lovers, 
the dreamers and me All of us under its spell We know that it's probably magic Have you been off asleep? And have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name Is the sweet sound you call the young sailors? I think it's one and the same. I heard it too many times to ignore it. There's something that I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection. Lovers, the dreamers and me Ugh, that was so bad it locked up my computer Quick, let's get out of here before it finds the key <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean it uh, Alright Kevin's quiz of the week Have you got your answer sheets ready? Pause this if you haven't. Here we go. Question 1. Tempo means A. Fast and slow B. Loud, quiet and silent or C. High and low Question 2. Pitch means what? A. Fast and slow B. Loud, quiet and silent Or C. High and low Question 3. Dynamics are A. Fast and slow B. Loud, quiet and silent Or C. High, high and low Question 4. Sound is made when air molecules A. Vibrate B. Explode or C. Dissolve Question 5. Sound travels through the air in A. Straight lines B. Waves or C. A taxi. Question 6. The part of a trombone which moves in and out is called what? A. A swing. B. A roundabout. Or C. A slide. Question 7. To change the pitch of a trumpet, you press what? A. The buttons. C, B. The valves. Or C. Switches. Question 8. The frog leader of the Muppets is called A. Kermit the Frog. B. Felix the Frog or C. Freddo the Frog Question 9 Jim Henson created the Muppets and which other TV kids show? Hmm. A. Nut Road B. Peanut Lane or C. Sesame Street Question 10. Kermit plays what instrument in Rainbow Connection? A. The piano B. The banjo or C. The trombone And now, the answers!
Question one. Tempo means A. Fast and slow. Question two. Pitch means C. High and low. Question three. Dynamics are B. Loud, quiet and silent. Question four. Sound is made when air molecules A. Vibrate. Question five. Sound travels through the air in waves, which is B. Not a taxi. Question six. The part of a trombone which moves in and out is called a C. Slide. Question seven. To change the pitch of a trumpet, you press the B. Valves. Question eight. The frog leader of the Muppets is called A. Kermit the Frog. Question nine. Jim Henson created the Muppets and which other kids show? The answer is C. Sesame Street. Question ten. Kermit plays what instrument in Rainbow Connection? B. The banjo. OK, guys. Count up how many you've got and write the answer at the bottom. But... Don't worry if you haven't got very many, because remember, you can always have another go. So, Kevin, this week we've learnt a new vocabulary word, which was dynamics, loud, quiet and silent. And we've been practising using those other vocabulary words from last week. Timbre, which is the type of sound or the instrument. Tempo, fast, like a cheetah slow like a tortoise, like Steve, and we've also been looking at pitch, which is high, middle and low notes. But that's all the time we've got. What do you think you've learned most this week? I've learned that some frogs are okay. Well, that's something. See you next week, guys. Bye! Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, it's a good time. I said it was a good time.